good YouTube it is James coming to you again with another video here to explain to you some stuff about startup law that you may be wondering so I get asked the question all the time can you please explain to me how vesting works and what is a vesting agreement so I'm here to do that with you today um, let's break it down so first off a vesting schedule is the schedule by which shares or stock options that you have been granted will become yours to own and keep over a period of time. Now, this may vest, meaning you get to own it little by little over a monthly time span or a quarterly time span, sometimes even an annual time span, even though that's not really that often that you'll see that situation. Now, the way that you get these shares or options is through an agreement that you sign. And it's not actually called a vesting agreement. Um, what it will normally be called is a restricted stock purchase agreement or a restricted stock option grant agreement or something like that along those lines, depending on how the attorney who drafts it chooses to phrase the title of the document. In either case, with either one of these documents, what you are getting is a list of terms that tell you several things. It tells you how much you are getting. It tells you how much it costs to pay for it up front at that time. It tells you when you will be receiving it. And it tells you how the company can get it back from you, if they can get it back from you and under what circumstances. So if we look at each one of those elements, of course, it tells you how much you're receiving, if you're getting 10,000 shares, 100,000 shares, um, 50,000 options, whatever the case may be. It will also tell you how much you have to pay for it at the moment. For many startups that are still uh, waiting to do their Series A funding, this will typically be the par value of the shares of stock. And for most startups, we're talking about $0.001 per share. So a very small amount that you would actually have to pay to get these shares. Uh, except in the case of options where you have a strike price, which is really telling you, here's how much you will have to pay for these when you decide to exercise that option. Uh, and therefore, this is how much you will pay for it versus how much it may actually be worth in the fair market value. Once you reach the level of a company that's done a Series A, where they've had a valuation done to say exactly how much the company is worth, exactly how much each share or each option is worth, that's how much you'll have to pay per share or per option as you buy into the company. So now, uh, the third thing that it's going to tell you is, how is this going to vest? And that's usually done in um, one of two or three different ways. It'll either be done monthly over the course of three or four years, or it may be done quarterly over the case of three or four years, or what is most common in the startup world is you'll have a four slash one type of setup where it'll be a four year long vesting period, but for the first year, none of your shares will actually vest and be yours to own. So during that first year, you will be working, doing things, earning the right to own those shares but if you should leave the company for whatever reason, uh, you will not have those shares that you've worked for over that number of months that you were with the company. But after you reach your first year, you will then receive ownership of 25% of the shares or the options as the case may be. And from that point on, month by month, you will earn more shares and each month they will become yours. All right, that's the typical setup that startups will see where you have four years with a one year cliff. That's what that year is called, that first year. Um, and then the fourth thing that you need to know about vesting agreements and restricted stock purchase and uh, restricted stock option grants is that the documentation will tell you how and under what circumstances the company can get back the shares. This is not always the case that they are trying to get them back but there are certain circumstances where, for example, if you are terminated by the company for some type of fraud, like let's say you were stealing IP from the company or you were violating your agreement by starting your own company or working for a competitor or whatever the case may be. 
under certain circumstances, the documentation will say, you know, if you are terminated for these reasons, the company can buy back all of the shares that you have vested over whatever period it's been um, at the purchase price that you paid for it up front. Um, but in other circumstances, and what is most likely and most normal, what will happen is the company will repurchase any unvested shares, if there are any, at the time you leave the company. Uh, so they'll allow you to keep whatever you have worked for, assuming you've passed your one-year cliff, of course, uh, and then they will repurchase at the par value, uh, at the purchase price, the number of shares that are unvested and they'll bring those back into the company. So hopefully this answers some questions that you may have had about vesting agreements and vesting schedules. Uh, if you have more questions, feel free to reach out to me. Uh, the link to my website is in the description. And if you like this video, please click the like button. If you enjoy my channel, please click the subscribe button and make sure to tap on the bell icon so that you are notified whenever I drop a new video. Thanks for tuning in again and see you next time.